Alright boys and girls, I hope you're having a lovely day. Okay, today lads, I want to talk about some of the games I've been playing in March. Now, obviously in March, I've been doing a lot of like video stuff. Like a lot of the games I've been playing have been purely for videos. I did a Star Wars Battlefront video, which I played a ton of Battlefront games. I did a King Kong video where I played a ton of King Kong games. I also did a Godzilla one where I just played a ton of Godzilla games. So I obviously don't want to go through all of those games again because those videos already exist. Okay, so the games I'm going to be talking about today are purely games that like I've played that one to do with those videos. I also feel like I should mention, lads, that I did actually play Bioshock 2 this month, okay? But I'm going to be doing a separate video on that a little bit later on, okay? So I won't talk about that game either. But despite all that, lads, I still had time to play five games this month, okay? So I've been doing a lot of gaming in, in the month of March. So without further ado then, boys, let's kick things off with a good one, okay? Let's start with Super Mario Land. Now, I picked this game up for about £5 in a retro game shop. I can't remember what the name of the shop was now, but I visited, um... I can't remember where it was now. I visited the town anyway, and uh, this game was in there. And it was only like five pounds and I've recently had like a Game Boy Advance so I've just been collecting pretty heavy on the Game Boy. And if you guys can tell I've got like a custom case here. Obviously this game didn't come with this. I had to make this but uh, yeah it's just like a little cassette tape that I made. Uh, I made the custom cover for but uh, yeah so I bought it unboxed for about five pounds. Uh, it's not in the best condition. It's got a little bit like I don't know what this is at the top here, but it's almost like started to brown, which is a little bit weird. Uh, but for five pounds, I can't really argue. But anyway, I bought this game, you know, because it's Mario on the Game Boy. I thought you can't really go wrong with that. And I was absolutely freaking right, lads, okay? I adored this game. I want to start off with the soundtrack here, boys, okay? I mean, it's Mario, so obviously it's going to have a banging soundtrack. But my God, the first song to this game, I had it stuck on my head literally for weeks. <laughs> In terms of the gameplay here, boys, it's pretty simple, okay? It's about as simple as a Mario game can get, uh, but it's still really fun, even on the Game Boy, you know? It's not, like, got the best graphics, uh, it looks very, very basic, but still, it just, it plays so fun, you know? It's just classic Mario. So one of the things I really loved about this game as well, lads, is just how retro it felt, okay? Because with this game, you have to beat it in one go, okay? You don't, like, finish a level and then get to save it like you do with a lot of modern games. You have to beat this game in one go. It's not a very long game, there's only, like, 12 levels, but you have to do all 12 12 levels with all your lives remaining and you have to do it in one go and that just created such fun for me you know because like I had to keep replaying the first levels over and over and over again and it did get a little bit boring but I don't know I just liked it and eventually I did eventually like beat it and it was just it was really satisfying when I finally did it and some of those later levels in this game do get pretty tough okay so I had to like hoard the lives up and I just really enjoyed that on top of that this game has some like shoot 'em up levels in there that were pretty fun okay and in fact the last level was like a shoot 'em up level which was I was just wasn't really expecting that but uh yeah, it was just a really good one, lads. This was really fun. Uh, it's just a really good Mario game, okay? I honestly, like, rate this really highly in regards to Mario games. And this is, like, up there as one of my favourites, to be honest with you. I think it's super good. Uh, so, yeah, if you've got a Game Boy, lads, you absolutely must play it. Because I honestly think this might be my favourite Game Boy game. Like, original Game Boy. I adore it. Okay, then, boys. The next game I played this month, okay, was one that I have played God knows how many times. But I really just felt like playing it again. Uh, and that is Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 3. Now, when it comes to the Tony Hawk's games, lads, uh, i got to be honest. I think the Tony Hawk series is probably my favourite, like, franchise of all time, okay, when it comes to the games. I just adored the Tony Hawk series. Now, obviously, not every game in the Tony Hawk series is created equally, you know, there's some are better than others, to say the least, like, you've got Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 5, that is certainly a bad egg in the series. Get this bum out of here, will you? Just get this bum out of here already. But for the most part, lads, I love almost every Tony Hawk's game, okay, and Pro Skater 3 is definitely one of my favourites. When it comes to the Tony Hawk series, it's not, like, my absolute favourite, okay, I'd probably give that to either Pro Skater 4 or Underground 2. I just adore those two and a lot of that is like nostalgia. I do have a lot of nostalgia for Pro Skater 3, uh, but for me, this is like the most replayable Tony Hawk's. When I think about the Tony Hawk's games that I go back to the most, Pro Skater 3 is uh, like, it is the highest for me, okay? I play this game more than any other Tony Hawk's because I love how replayable it is. For one, the game is incredibly short. Like once you know what to do, uh, you can beat this game in like an hour, like tops. And on top of that, lads, every time you beat this game, you unlock new stuff, okay? And a lot of the times it's like new characters. So like the first time you beat this game, you unlock Darth Maul, which is absolutely awesome. The second time you beat it, you unlock Wolverine. Like, if this game was made in 2024, you'd have to buy those characters, you know? There's no way you'd unlock them after beating the game. So I just, I mean, I love that for starts. Uh, but yeah, just being able to, like, unlock these cool characters every time you beat it is just absolutely incredible. And it just gives you that incentive to, like, beat the game, like, over and over and over again. And I've beaten this game a lot of times. I've probably beaten it, like, six, seven, maybe eight times in the last, like, three years. And funnily enough, lads, I just couldn't get enough of this 
this game uh, this month, okay? I ended up beating this game three times in three days. Like, I spent three days with this game, and I just I just beat it three times, like, back to back to back. I just had so much fun with it, lads. It's just the perfect game. And the soundtrack is incredible. It's classic Tony Hawk's gameplay. Uh, you know, it's just short and sweet. I just love this game, lads, okay? So, if for some reason you have not played Pro Skater 3, just play it, okay? It's one of the best Tony Hawk's games. It's probably... I'd probably say this is my third favourite Tony Hawk's game, because I just love coming back to it. Okay, then, boys, the next game I played this month is a bit of a strange one, uh, and that is going to be Incredible Crisis for the PS1. So now, obviously, this month, lads, like I was saying before, I did play a lot of games. I was playing the Godzilla stuff and the King Kong stuff and what have you, so I didn't have, like, a ton of time to play, like, super long games, you know? I wasn't loading up RPGs or anything, and I was just going through my collection and seeing what games I was intrigued to play, uh, and I saw Incredible Crisis, and I thought, okay, I would love to play that, but, you know, I didn't know how long it was going to be, so I'd look on YouTube just to see how long, like, the gameplay of this game was, and this game was, like, an hour long on YouTube, and I thought, okay, like, if it takes an hour to beat, then, you know, great, I, I, I can obviously play that really quickly. Now, I will say, it definitely took longer than an hour for me to beat this game, because, uh, basically, the way it works is there's, like, tons of mini games, and you have to do the mini games in order to progress the story. You play as this, like, family, then just crazy shit's happening around the city, like, it's just absolutely bad shit insane. I'm not being funny, what the fuck is going on? But anyway, point is, lads, this was a short game, okay, and that's why I wanted to play it, okay? It didn't take me an hour to beat it, but it didn't take me too long. I probably beat this game in three hours, I would say, which is absolutely okay, like, that's a reasonable amount of time to sink into a game, so I was able to beat this in a couple days, which is perfect for me. And yeah, it was just a really, really crazy one, lads, okay? It was, it was just absolutely mental, okay? I mean, the things that were going on in this game were just, it just didn't make any sense. At one point in the game, you're getting chased by a boulder that's just flying through the office, it's coming down the fucking elevator and shit. At another point in the game, you're on a hospital cart going down the motorway. Um, there's an alien invasion in this game. Like, the things that happen in this game are just fucking mental. So yeah, it's definitely a weird experience, okay, to say the least. And speaking of that, lads, there's one, like, mini game in here that is beyond weird, okay? And I have to tell this story because, um, it's, it's honestly kind of funny. So I was playing this game at my mum's house, okay? And I've recently bought this, like, uh, I'm, I'm actually, I'm gonna have to show you what I bought because explaining it's gonna be difficult. Right, lads, I've got it in here in this bag, okay? Uh, so yeah, I basically bought this, like, PS2 TV thing. So how it works, lads, is obviously you've got your PS2 Slim there. I mean, it's like a TV that just attaches to the back of it. So it's almost turned into like a, a like a, it's like a laptop. But it's not completely portable, lads. You do have to plug it in still. Uh, but it's just ideal, you know, when, it, when you want to bring it around someone's house or if you want to go camping and there's hookups. And uh, I just thought it was a really cool thing to buy. So I picked this up. Um, and yeah, I, I was playing this game around my mum's house with this. You know, I was just playing it at the dinner table. But there's a mini game in here that I was playing and you basically have to give a, a massage to a woman on a ferris wheel which is already weird enough but just listen to this mini game a bit down. Ooh, just a tiny bit mm, there uh, ooh, uh, mm, mm. That was weird. And as I'm playing this game at the fucking dinner table at my mum's house, my mum overhears this and she thinks I'm watching porn at the dinner table, no joke. I had to explain this shit, lads, to my mum. Like, no, mum, I'm not watching porn, it's just the game, okay? You know, I had to explain it and it was awkward as shit. So yeah, that was definitely a highlight of this game for me, okay, was playing this game at the dinner table. It was just, uh, yeah, it was a hard one to explain to my mum, but eventually I think she got the idea, I think. Maybe she still thinks that I was watching porn, I don't know. But anyway, most of the mini games in here, lads, are, they're, they're weird, but not quite quite that weird, okay? And most of them are pretty, like, easy. They're not too difficult. There's a couple of hard ones in there. I remember, like, the last one in particular was quite frustrating because you have to, like, tap X and triangle, um, and then you have to, like, avoid this, like, crane thing. It's not massively hard, but it's, like, a really long mini game, and it really starts to hurt, hurt your arm, you know, as you're doing it. So I had to keep pausing it in the middle of the mini game, okay? Because it was, uh, it was starting to hurt my arm a bit. But, uh, yeah, I really enjoyed this game, lads. It wasn't too long, um, and it was just a good fun one, okay? It was, it was kind of perfect for what I needed. Alright, and boys, the next game I played this month, okay, is going to be 007 Nightfire for the PS2. Now, obviously, this is a highly regarded James Bond game, lads, okay? I hear a lot of people say that this is one of the best James Bond games, um, but I was a little bit concerned about it, and the only reason I was concerned is I've played a couple of, like, uh, James Bond games that people have recommended to me, and I haven't found them as good as I would have thought. I not too long ago played Quantum of Solace on PS3, which people say is, like, meant to be really good. I honestly didn't think it was that great. I thought it was a bit meh. Uh, not bad or anything, just not nothing special. It just felt like a, I don't know, a mediocre Call of Duty campaign when I was playing that game. It just didn't really feel that special to me. Um, and then I also played Bloodstone, which is a good game, don't get me wrong. Like, it's a very good game. But, like, people talk about it like it's the best James Bond game ever. And it's okay. I mean, it's a good game, but I wouldn't say it's that good. What did he say? What the fuck? What the fuck? 
just like the driving sections in Bloodstone are really good. Okay, they're like that's the highlight of that game for me. Um, but yeah, the gameplay itself, like you know, when you're shooting people, I mean, it's all right, but it's nothing special in my opinion. See, so, yeah, I was a little bit worried about Nightfire and like not being as good as people said because, like I said, I, I didn't really find the other James Bond games I've played recently that good. Uh, with that said, though, boys, Nightfire is by far my favorite James Bond game I've played. I adored this game from minute one, lads. It's just such a fun game. Okay, it's just a first-person shooter, but my god, is it is it fun? The game here is just so polished it just makes the first person shooting feel really nice okay and it, it feels smooth to play it and on top of that you've got some vehicle sections in here like when you're driving around in cars they're really really fun i just wish there was more of them there's only like three levels in this game where you get to drive cars um one of which is like an underwater level which i hate and i'll get on to that uh, but the other two like driving section parts of the game i really enjoyed and again i just wanted more of that but yeah the underwater level was annoying as fuck it's like an instant stealth mission um i i already hate underwater levels as it is but having it as like an instant stealth is already bad for me because I just suck at those. There's a part in that level where you have to avoid these mines and it was fucking irritating. Uh, with this game as well, there's no checkpoints, so you have to restart the whole level again, which is pretty annoying. <laughs> With that said though, lads, that's like the only mission in this game that annoyed me. Other than that, I really enjoyed it, okay? And again, like the shooting mechanics in this game were just super fun and it felt really smooth. I also loved like the variation in locations in this game. Like the final level in this game, you're in space and you're flying around shooting people. Like it's just, this game mixes it, mixes it up so well. But yeah, I just really had fun with this one, lads, okay? It's a really short game, which is why I picked it out because I knew it wasn't that long. I heard it was like a, a pretty short James Bond game, uh, but I had so much fun with it, okay? I just wish it was a little bit longer. That would be like my one big critique with this game, okay, because it's really short, okay, it was kind of ideal for what I needed at the time, uh, but yeah, I beat this game in like a couple days, which is kind of a shame, because it was really good, and if this game had maybe, I don't know, three more levels in there, and like maybe one of those was a driving level, I'd have been super satisfied, but nonetheless, really good game, as if you're into James Bond, you need to play it. Okay then boys, the last game I played this month was a big, big juicy one, okay, so I saved the best to last here, and that is Silent Hill 3. Now for those who don't know, lads, uh, uh, Silent Hill 2 is probably one of my my favorite games of all time okay I cannot sing enough praise about Silent Hill 2 it's just I mean it's literally a perfect game I adore that game with all my heart okay and I've only ever played Silent Hill 1 and 2 like they're the only Silent Hill games that I had played up until this point I adore Silent Hill 1 as well I think that game is amazing and it's aged super well considering it's on the PS1 uh, but I'd never played Silent Hill 3 so I figured that now was the time to play it lads I was just in the mood for it and I really wanted to check it out because I'd heard how good it was and yeah this game isn't as good as Silent Hill 2 that's one thing I will say but it's still fucking good okay it's definitely up there as one of the best games I've played so I want to start off by saying with this game just how bloody good it looks okay this might be the best looking PS2 game I have ever played just like it like it, it actually stunned me it doesn't feel like you're playing a PS2 game but the character models in this game look incredible like there are PS3 games that have worse character models than this game okay the, like it looks insane soundtrack here lads of course is absolutely classic okay I mean it's Akira Yamaoka it's obviously gonna have a good soundtrack that's kind of a staple of the Silent Hills series but yeah five minutes into this game and I'm already jamming away at some absolute banger tracks I'm putting them onto YouTube and saving them to my playlist end of small sanctuary is just such a good song and I, I again I that that's straight onto the playlist now I listen to that all the time when I edit videos and stuff I also love the way this game starts off it's quite similar to Silent Hill 1 where it gets straight into that haunting shit uh you know right off, right off the get-go it just tries to scare you you're in the amusement park and it's just getting creepy and wild okay straight out the gate you, you know similar to Silent Hill 1 things are just getting super demonic and you're like okay, I'm in for a scary one here. There's just something about the atmosphere of Silent Hill games. They just get really under my skin and I just I, I love it. I gotta be admit, I, I love it when this game scares me to death. It's spooky. I will admit though, with Silent Hill 3, lads, I, I was probably less scared playing this one than I was other Silent Hill games. Um, not that this wasn't scary. I would actually argue this might be the scariest of the Silent Hills, but I feel like I've just had enough exposure of the Silent Hill games that I'm almost used to it at this point. Like, yes, I was still absolutely scared, but it was nothing compared to how I felt in Silent Hill 2 when I played that game for the first time, because that was obviously my first Silent Hill game, and when I was playing through Silent Hill 2 and I was going through the apartment blocks, I think I've told this story a million times, but I was shitting literal bricks when I was playing Silent Hill 2 for the first time, I, I was genuinely so scared. At this point, I'm quite used to how Silent Hill works, so I wasn't as scared playing this game, I could play it at night time and I wasn't as scared, but that doesn't mean there's not some absolutely haunting moments in this game, okay, there's some real good scares here. Like, there's one moment in the game where you knock on a bathroom stall and it knocks back, and you're like, okay, that, I don't like that. Um, 
um, but it doesn't open, okay? But then you walk away, come back, and it's like, it's open now. And then there's like blood everywhere. Like that shit's just creepy. There's a moment in this game where there's a wheelchair and it, you just like, there's nothing like to it, but it just looks scary. I don't know how it does it. And then there's like a room in the game where there's like a mirror and the, the, the whole room just starts turning into this like weird, like blood vessel things. I don't know, it's just creepy and shit. There's also that train door moment where you're at the subway station and you go to investigate the door and then it, it's like locked and you're like, oh fuck and you're on the train, you know, you're on the railway track and you have to get off in time or the train hits you. It, this game just knows how to fuck with you. This game is a lot more bloodier than the other Silent Hill games, especially Silent Hill 2. There's a lot more blood in Silent Hill 3. It's a very, it's a very red coloured game, you know? And just investigating the other world in this game is, is very horrifying at times, okay? It's a super, super scary game. <laughs> Oh, I just don't like that. I also feel like I need to mention with this game is just how good of a main protagonist Heather is in this game. Probably my favourite main protagonist, to be honest. Don't get me wrong, like, I still love Harry Mason and James Sunderland, of course, is absolutely iconic in his own way, but if we're just talking about pure personality, it doesn't get much better than Heather, okay? I mean, right off the get-go, she's just got such an attitude, you know? She's such a teenager. She could be so bratty at times, and I love it. She's just got so many good, iconic lines. My name is Douglas Carter. I'm a detective. Detective? Really? Well, nice talking to you. See, I really enjoyed Heather's character in this game, and I also love the way that she's designed. It's so it's so memorable, you know, her outfit, the way she looks. Uh, she looks simple, but in a I don't know, in a in a in a way that she's memorable. I don't know how to explain it, but she just like instantly looks like cool. See, I absolutely had a blast with this game. That's okay. It was horrifying. It was scary. It was amazing. It had a great story. If I had one critique of this game, it's that the camera can be super janky at times, and the camera obviously is fixed, but you can sort of, sort of like move it but it just has a mind of its own at times, so it makes combat a little bit, like, janky at times. That aside, though, I adored this game, lads, and honestly, if you haven't played it, you absolutely must, okay? It's one of the best Silent Hill games. So, yeah, that's all the games that I played this month, lads, aside from the stuff that, you know, obviously, I've already done videos on. Like I said, I did try to pick some stuff that's slightly shorter, so, uh, you know, these games were pretty short, but I still had a fun time with them, okay? I really enjoyed them. But, yeah, I'll let you guys go. Let me know in the comments what games you've been playing recently. I'd love to hear. Uh, other than that, boys, subscribe here if you're new, and I'll see you guys in the next one, all right? Peace.